Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Munira on Munira's Musings with my guest, Anna Newman, all the way from Ontario, Canada. Welcome to our show, Anna. Thank you so much for having me, Munira. You are most welcome. See, here we, on Manira's Musings, we talk about niches. We all know that the niche is anger riches. And I have a new tagline. Let me see what I came up with this week. Okay. Finding your niche begins with you, right? Mm -hmm. And this is amazing because I see so many people standing on the sidelines, wanting to do stuff with their skills they've accumulated in life. But what they have decided to do is not take the next step and execute the plan and i'm here to push you but when i do these shows i bring extraordinary people who have extraordinary and amazing skills that they've used tweaked repurposed to create their own businesses now how does one do that so let's talk to anna newman and see where what her skills are because she talks about from chaos to calm. What does that even mean? But before we do, if you like this segment, go ahead, like, share, and subscribe because we want more people to jump into the water with us as an entrepreneur and a businesspreneur and a sisterpreneur because we want you to take your life to the next level. So without further ado, Anna. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks again, Manira, for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, as you mentioned, I live in um, Ontario, Canada, and um, just outside of Toronto. And we realize, like you said, you have a daughter that's like an hour away from me. So that's such a small world. But um, so a little bit about myself. So from Chaos to Calm is my organizing business. So I haven't always had this mis business, rather. It's only been in the last... Uh, year, year and a bit since COVID of last year. So what's that 15 months we've been in this. Um, and I had a corporate job of 26 years and that then that came to um, a sudden halt unexpectedly. And so, you know, I had to figure out, okay, I'm still young, I have to work, what am I going to do? So my passion has always been decluttering, organizing, cleaning. So I decided to start up my uh, or my own organizing business and I called it from chaos to calm because, you know, a lot of my clients, when I start working with, with them, they are in this chaotic state of mind and space. And then what I come in and do is help them put in, um, you know, certain um, steps, certain habits, um, and so that they can proceed to get to a calm state, which is so important, right? So that's what I've been doing. And I was very fortunate uh, right at the beginning of um, starting up that I have a mentor. Um, her name is Dorothy Brerringer. Now, for those of you, and I don't know if yourself, Manira, if you've ever heard and or watched the um, TV hit show Hoarders, you know that Hoarders, I don't know if anybody's heard of it. So I've always um, loved Dorothy. And um, anyway, I reached out to her, um, you know, to have her on my, um, like to have a, uh, an interview with her. And she was so graceful to accept it. After the interview, um, you know, she invited me down to um, the States amongst COVID um, to be one of the organizers on her uh, TV hit show Hoarders. So that was a fabulous experience. So she's been my mentor. She's been behind me. I'm certified, excuse me, I'm certified as one of her um, boss organizers in Canada. So I've had a lot of um, great and valuable um, experience working with her. So I'm very fortunate. So yeah, here I am trying to grow my businesses, as you said, and loving the online space and having to, you know, uh, meet people like yourself and, you know, to have me on your show, like you said, so that we can help other entrepreneurs, mompreneurs, right? This is so exciting. <laughs> this yeah. is the reason because I went through this a few minutes ago. I, and I say minutes ago, but I, I know what you're talking about. So let's talk be before all of this happened, 
right? Let's talk about when um, you had a corporate job. What did you do in the corporate job? So I worked for um, our uh, local police station here where I live. And I'd been there for 26 years. Then a situation erupted um, and I left. I had to leave the job. So it, it wasn't on good terms. It came rather suddenly and very upsetting. Um, so once that happened, you know, I was in such a low, you know, low place in my life because that's the job I've had for 26 years. And suddenly it came, you know, I got let go and now I've had to, um, you know, kind of rebuild my life at, you know, 52, 53 years old. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, I have these skills. That's all I know. And then I'm like, no, no, I'm going to pick myself up. And I did. And that's when I started down um, this journey of helping entrepreneurs, mompreneurs and all that organize and declutter. So, so forgive me if I go back to this job. And I know you don't want us to talk about it, but Fine. you had a certain job. Did you evolve in that job? As 26 years is a long time. Did you start at one thing and then evolve and oh, you know, yes. grow with this job, right? Yes, so absolutely. along the way, you accumulated skill. Mm -hmm. I did. Did you learn the organizing and decluttering skills there? No, I did not. Um, I actually, uh, and I know this is going to sound funny, but I have always been since... I, I, I'm going to say at birth, but, you know, I was always very, very organized and I could not stand um, like chaos in my house and my, not my house, but my parents' house when I lived at home. Like I always did the cleaning. I did the cooking. I like, I just could not stand a mess. And when I would go visit cousins or friends, I would always be there and they lived in chaos and their rooms were disastrous or their home. So I would go there and I just said, okay, you know what? I was just like, wow, I can't even be in this space visiting because it's just my OCD kicks in. <laughs> so I would just automatically, okay, let's, let's try to organize some of this chaos. So I would go in there for like three hours and, you know, they were just so ecstatic, ecstatic, right. With the progress, right. Even in just three hours. So that's when, like I said, when I got let go, I thought, you know what, I know how to do this organizing decluttering. It's, it's what I've always done kind of just like something for fun because I love doing it. Um, not that I ever thought in a million years that I would be actually, you know, having a business doing this, but it is a passion of mine and I love doing it and I love helping people. And when my mentor, as I mentioned, Dorothy, allowed me that opportunity it was just it was I was just so fulfilled right I thought wow I really can do this right and she helped me and has helped me so it's been an amazing journey so yeah. you know it's so amazing right that you were so it's safe to say that you were a born organizer yes okay sure. <laughs> that's, that's an awesome sure. I was a born organizer okay yeah. people think this is funny but I know because when I go to my daughter's home, they want things a certain way. So every daughter has their way of doing certain things. No two people have a sim the same way to do things. So when you go in and you work with your cousins or your clients or your friends or whatever you do, do they like the way they organize? You organize or do you do you do they feel like you are and Approaching on their space? No, um, not at all, because they reach out to me, right, for help, right? Because they're stuck. They don't know what to do, where to start, how to put those systems in place. So then I come in, and, um, you know, everybody thinks that when you hire an organizer or when you start organizing, even on your own, that, you know, you have to go out you know, to the container store or home sense and buy all these different, you know, gadgets to organize. And that is probably the last thing that I tell people to do because there's so many different steps in between. So what I do is I come in and I get a sense first of, I want to know their background. Like, how did you get to this point? Right? Like, usually there's something that has come up or something that's happened in their life uh, whether it was their past or their present that has brought them to this part of their life now where they're disorganized. Right. And so, you know, I work on them. Okay. Tell me how this happened. And then I work from there on, okay, 
what room do you want to start with? What kind of, you know, vision do you have for this space, right? And then we begin to proceed to declutter, going through, our, you know, one room at a time, completing it fully, um, and then moving on. So that is how I, you know, in, you know, in a just point form, quick ver uh, fashion of what I do in my uh, program to help people out. So, so many questions come to mind. Now, do you go to their homes, all of them? Do you go in person and sh look at stuff like cupboards, you know, closets, um, drawer space, you know, what, whatever? Do you physically do that? Or when you talk organization, you know, people talk about kitchens, people talk about bedrooms, people talk about computer files, etc. What is your forte? What is it that you like to Okay, so as I um, had mentioned at the beginning, so I started up the business right when COVID hit. So obviously the world was shut down. I could not go into people's homes. So I decided I was going to be a virtual organizer, which means just like we're doing here, we would get on Zoom um, and talk over Zoom. They would show me their space, what, you know, what, it, so I can get a feel of what was going on. Um, and, and it's been great because all my clients are virtual now. In saying that, I have had a couple of clients, uh, you know, near where I live. And when things started to open up and I was able to go back into their homes and I would go into their homes and, and help out. So technically I do both virtually and in person, but the bulk of my clients are virtual, virtual, just like me and you, right? Talking right now. And it has been very good, right? It's proven to be successful. So I went with it because that's what the world was all about now, right? Everybody's gone Zoom. We can't go anywhere. So oh, and that's wonderful, right? Because here's the thing. I, I like the fact that you decide you you are helping out people. So let me ask you this. In your career, in, in this this organization organizing career, mm -hmm. what have you seen most? Why do people have so much stuff? What is what is the underlying reason that you see that is so common with everybody? Well, I would say, um, you know, the first couple of things that come to mind with, you know, there is some commonality in, in the clients, you know, there are and there isn't. But I have found that um, most of the time it people become um, have their space messy and cluttered because a lot of them didn't grow up maybe with fa or with parents that taught them. And I know when I say teach organizing, how do you teach it? But a lot of people didn't have their kids say do chores, you know, you need to clean your room, you need to look after this space, it's your space, you know, um, and so their parents were disorganized, you know, some of them may even be hoarders, like we bring it to the extreme. So growing up, that's all they knew, right? They didn't know how to be organized because nobody ever taught them. And so, you know, that was the number one. And another big one, the top two. So the, the number one was what I just mentioned that it wasn't taught to them and that they grew up in that kind of environment. And then number two is that they've had some kind of traumatic um, event happen in their life. Would it be, you know, a, a spouse passed away, a parent, uh, God forbid, a child, we've had that, or I've had that, a pet even. But so when they're going through that turmoil, mentally, they just can't handle you know, anything like looking after their space. They're just struggling every day just to, you know, wake up and, and, and carry on after this, this, you know, whatever it was, the trauma in their life. So, you know, a lot of them just let their space go because it's the least of their worries. And then that's where I, you know, come in and, and help them out. So those are the two that I would say are, are the most common. So, and I think part of this, the reason that you, I, I bring this up was because my husband passed away about last year and oh. a lot of things that, you know, people want, we wanted to save because it was sentimental value. Yes. But I've done the cleanup, the decluttering, the reorganization before as well. So I've always said, no, you need one thing, one moment of this person. And you have a lot of memories, right? And you have photos that are on Google Photos or whatever app you use. 
it's yeah. all there so you don't need a lot of items to just sit there and hold on to but people are different everybody is different so i love the fact that you're doing this for people because it is so necessary it is so amazing that we need this and sometimes it's easier when we have people come and show us how to do this so tips and tricks can you show us can you give us three tips that uh, anybody in the house can start working on um yeah there's three tips. so i just wanted to touch quickly before i, I you know i give you the three um it's so true about the sentimental because if i had to say that um you know one of the main um kind of barriers i'm faced with is people getting rid of stuff because everything to them is sentimental like you said and you know in order to proceed and move forward in your space and declutter it you have to get rid of things otherwise you're not going anywhere you're just moving it from one place to another right so it is everything to people which i get because i have sentimental things but at the end of the day, you don't need a lot of stuff to live, right? You just don't. But, you know, I do get faced with that sentimental piece all the time. And just to touch again, I just wanted to mention that having someone helping you like myself and having that accountability is probably the number one reason for success is because holding like I come in and I hold you accountable you need to show up because first of all you've paid for it and second of all I'm here waiting for you so you need to come on and 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 um do the work like I can't do the I help you do the work but you need to show up right and do the work and I help you along the way so accountability is huge as well so I just wanted to put that in there now the top three um so that I the first one I would say is start small. A lot of people think that, okay, I, this is it. I want to declutter. I want to get organized. And they think it's going to happen in a weekend. Well, it doesn't. It takes months. I know sometimes people want that instant, um, you know, that instant, you know, people like to see the space organized instantly, right? You need that one for that, right? Have you found a one? No, not yet, but I'm looking. <laughs> I find that wand, I'd be out of business. <laughs> no, but it'd be for you to go clean up everything. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so I say to people, you know, real realistically, it's like losing weight, right? You don't wake up, well, you wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to lose weight. You don't lose it overnight, right? It takes you X amount of time to lose, to gain the weight. It's going to take you time to lose it, just like doing this, right? So I tell people, start small. I always tell people, pick a small drawer, a junk drawer, or a piece of count or a countertop or tabletop that is cluttered and start there, start sorting things out. Well, the first thing I say is get rid of the stuff you don't need, first of all. Then when you're left with the stuff you do need, start putting them in piles of like with like. So if you, in the junk drawer, you might have all your pens, you might have sticky notes, you might have staples, you might have, I don't know, whatever. Put everything that's the same in those piles and if at that point you want to go you know to your local dollar store or container store and buy an or like a drawer organizer so that you can put them in those drawer organizers so that when you open and close the cupboard they're not always you know they're not scattered right so that's when i say you know you don't have to do that but it, if you want to it would help because then every time you open the drawer it gets a mess again then you're like well why did i even do that so that in, is maybe the one time I'd make the exception um, to going out and getting something. But again, you need to measure your space that you have to, you know, you have to know your dimensions before you can go out and buy those kind of things. So start small and give yourself the second one would be 15 minutes. Start with 15 minutes in a small drawer. That should take you about 15 minutes, right? Because then people become overwhelmed. People don't have a lot of time. People are homeschooling now. People are working from home it's life, right? So start with 15 minutes and then build up, right? Um, and what would be number three? I would say if you have um, somebody that can assist you, like if you have a family member, a cousin, a friend, a neighbor, they can come over to kind of get you started and hold you accountable. That I think are the, I think that that would get you further in your journey. 
um, than maybe trying to start on your own, right? Because everybody always finds those excuses not to start. But again, if you're being held accountable, you're going to do it, right? So those, uh, those would be my top three. <clears throat> so um, two things, right? I like the fact that you said to have it, you know, to have somebody accountable. I love that fact. But the fact, but, but everything that you just said requires the first step is to begin. And if you're thinking about it and you haven't yet done it, that's the worst thing. So if you're thinking, ladies and gentlemen, of if you're thinking of decluttering, start to start. And you know, you don't need to pick a, for me, it didn't I didn't start doing it a drawer. I started taking one one piece at a time exactly. you know even if i had a drawer i had like pencil like you said those from dollar stores i had organized that a long time ago and then the, so what i did for the first day was while i was watching a movie or something i took all the pens that i had mm -hmm. and then and then checked to see those that wrote right and then the ones that didn't work straight in the garbage and then save the one so out of the 50 i had only 10 that i needed to keep the rest had to go and you know in our condo our downstairs we have this area where we call it a commonality if you have things that you don't need anymore just mm -hmm. leave it there um and somebody may use it right, right. you have a plant you have a glass you know i had the fill fill counters and stuff like that all of that stuff i put downstairs so people those who needed it to be right so that way i didn't see it in my house but it got rid of so that's the first step right and so begin i'm going to tell everybody this is something everybody should do and i love the fact that you're doing this because i realized a long time ago and then covid made everybody else realize that we don't need several of several things right right, right. My husband, my late husband, what he did was he would say, if I throw this away, there's going to be a day tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to use this. I'm going to need this. Then I'm going to have to go buy it. So what do you do with those people, right? What do you do to those people? Well, it's funny because I was going to say the number one thing, uh, reason I get for not getting rid of things was as we, as i said is the sentimental and the second is always well what if i need it what if i you know what if the what if the what if well listen i say if you've had this pen i'm just going to use it for example for two years and it's been sitting in your drawer and you've never reached for it i can probably guarantee you're not going to reach for it and if you do at that point that you need it then you can go out and buy it but if you hang up to everything because you think someday you need it again you're not going anywhere like you can at that time if you decide to do something that you need a hammer or whatever it is you're getting rid of then go out and buy it right and then you have it but again if you're going to hold on to everything for that what if day what if what if yeah again you're gonna you're you're gonna get you're not moving anywhere you're not moving the needle you're just staying stuck and to, in order to get unstuck you got to start. And that's where I come in and say, okay, you know, try to reason with them and say, okay, you know, if you haven't worn this dress for a year or two years, and you know, you keep saying, I have to lose 10 more pounds, 10, and you haven't lost it in the last two years, chances are you're not going to lose it. Right. So again, get rid of it, donate it. You were saying donate, sell. Um, there's always people out there that can use stuff, right. That you don't need. So give it away, sell it, donate it and be done with it, get it out of your house. So that's how that works. Such a wonderful, this is such a wonderful topic because I went through this. Uh, my husband and I lived in a five story home, right? He, oh, it wow. was his house for 24, 27 years. And I was there for about eight. Right. And uh, it was too big of a house, too big of a house. The closets were empty, but there were things there. Yeah. <laughs> there was no clothes, but there were things there. Uh, right? You ever filled up the, the closets with clothes, Manira? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, you know. So, so then you know, we, when when we decided that we were going to sell, we were told by the realtor that we only needed to have so many clothes. So we packed a lot of it, right? Yeah. At that time, I was working in corporate as well, but I had I had like two pants, three or seven three to five blouses and then some 
nice, you know, yeah. accessories as I call it. But you know, the thing is for three months that the house was on the market, I did very well by accessorizing and, you know, using the same clothes. And then I realized that I didn't need it. Right. But then when we did sell the house and it was under contract, we needed to empty stuff. Now, my yeah. husband was a contractor by business. He, uh, he did HVAC stuff a lot and he had so many kids, he had so much stuff. And I had the same problem with him. He's like, do we need to declutter? Do we need to give away? We gave away stuff. We sold stuff. We donated stuff. You know, we had a, an open house where family just came and said, oh, I need this. Can I take it? And we still had stuff, right? Right. And right. like you said, we're moving stuff from one place to another. There were a lot of things that we could have thrown away because my husband didn't use the internet as much. He didn't like PDF files. He wanted things in hard copy. Yes. And he had a lot of books. So when he passed away and we had one of his friends come and help us, God bless him. He said this whole section, it was a whole wall of our storage that needed to, because we moved from the garage, our garage into a storage because our new condo was two bedrooms. So we went from a five story house to a two bedroom condo, but we didn't need to bring that stuff. So we just kind of hauled it and killed our backs for bringing right. stuff that we didn't need. Right. So the point of this story is not to say that, you know, not to badmouth anybody or anything, but the fact is you have to make an adjustment because right now, everything you need is on a PDF file that if you call the manufacturer, they'll send it to you. Exactly. So you can find, find things on the internet if you are very savvy. You don't need a lot of things. Once you've read a book, um, my mentor, John, is John Maxwell, and he says that he gives, he buys books and then he gives away three years previous books that he purchased. So he keeps two years worth of inventory, the third year he gives it away right. because he's read the book, he's extracted what he needs in his notebooks, in his note cards, and then he gives it away. Right. So we should have the same mentality. Don't sit on stuff, just give it away, give it away because somebody out there needs it. Exactly. I love the fact that you're doing this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, and what, sorry, I was just going to touch on too, that usually when you're moving, that is the perfect time to get rid of stuff, right? Because why do you want to pack up the stuff that you're, first of all, you downsized from a big space to a small, so you can't bring all that stuff to a, a, a small condo, right? So you need to get rid of, and that is the perfect time to get rid of stuff because then you don't you're not taking it from one place to another and then trying to find a space so I always tell people when you move that is the best time to start getting rid of and purging all your stuff right and books is a big big one people hold on to books forever it's like once you've read it once maybe twice you know like now you can go on like you were saying online you can download the audible one you can listen to it like there's not a lot that you need to keep these days in terms of paperwork even because paperwork's a big thing too because everything is at your fingertips on the internet like your online banking you know you can pay your bills warranty stuff like everything right just try to minimize that stuff and keep what you really really need and paperwork is a big one too that you know, people have a hard time releasing, right? Because everybody wants a hard copy of everything. So they're printing out all this stuff and right, you know, you could just Google anything and it's right there at your fingertips. So, so such, such wisdom here. Mm -hmm. And how do people find you? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I have my own Facebook group called uh, Declutter Your Life. So you can, um, you know, search that on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, it's from chaos to calm and you have to put dot CA um, because there is a, somebody else that uses that. So I had to distinguish by putting dot CA because I'm from Canada. So from chaos to calm dot CA, CA on Instagram and declutter your life um, on Facebook. And I'd love for everybody to join and, you know, come into my community. It's, it's a safe space. You know, there's no kind of, you know, um, you know, whatever, everybody's there to help each other and bring each other up. Right. So, you know, this is awesome. I, I love the fact that we're talking about this today because we need to declutter. And then 
you're talking about just stuff. And there are people out there who help you with decluttering your, your mindset. And, mm -hmm. and I think what we, when you first begin this, you said that you start talking to people and ask them how they got there. Awesome, right? Because right. it's all about mindset and you have to learn yep. that you don't need stuff. And, and I've seen that before because when my first husband passed away, you know, it was like, we don't need a lot of things. None of the kids lived in his house. They were they were not even in the same state. Mm -hmm. Nobody needed anything. And he had held on to things, you know, for his, like his, it was his dear life. But when yeah. he passed away, nobody needed his things. Nobody wanted his things. So it's a lesson in life that, you know, I've come to the conclusion in my life as well after seeing all of these things right because i moved from so many places to so many places to you don't need a lot of things use the best of everything for yourself don't wait for a guest to come but if they come and they have dinner with you they're using the best plate you don't have to take it out of your china cabinet yep. but use it right don't wait for the best day because your best day is today and declutter your life because it makes a lot of sense Thank you, Lana. This was such a wonderful conversation. Oh, thank you for having me. I love, I could go on for hours about this. As you know, I'm very passionate <laughs> about it. So I am, um, again, I'd love for people to join. If, you know, people want to reach out to me personally, um, Anna Newman, you know, they can message me or whatever. Um, yeah. And thank you again, Manira, for taking time to, you know, to interview me. I appreciate it so much. No, this is awesome because it's also something that I've done all as well. And I saw I relate to it. And I tell people, you know what? You don't need to have a China cabinet. Use what you have. Enjoy what you have. And then, you know, we're living in an abundance community where we can go to a Walmart and get one of the best dining exactly. sets. Pay a little bit more, get a good dining set. And, you know, in the middle of the night, who knows, right? But yeah. enjoy what you have and don't just hoard it. Just for me is whatever you have enjoyed and if wow. you haven't used it then throw it out i i saw that in a long time in one of oprah's shows where she said if you don't have it if you haven't worn this in the last six months that you don't need it and i was like oh i need to go closet shopping but what really opened up my eyes was that real estate person who said just have this many outfits hanging in your closet and that made a lot of difference so people if you are interested in decluttering your house, yes, who want tips and tricks, please reach out to Anna's group. It's called Declutter um, Your okay. Life. Your okay. Life. Yes. Declutter Your Life. And go ahead and just start, right? Because we live in such an abundance that if you keep hoarding the old stuff, we'll never go to the new one. And that goes for your mindset as well. So, yes. ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful week until next week when we bring you another guest on Manira's Musings where we talk about a different niche, a different idea, and a different perspective. Thank you, everybody. Like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group.